Jeffrey wasted his 20s. Most days he sat around in mundane college lectures, scrolling through his phone before heading out to the bath to drink for a couple of hours and smoke weed and eat pizza. He only realized this lifestyle was a mistake when he reached his 30s. Alone, broke, and lost. Don't be like Jeffrey. Adonis. Adonis values his time. He spent his 20s building a business, picking himself up from his failures and learning from his mistakes. Whilst Jeffrey was wasting time on video games and drugs, Adonis was waking up early, working on his business and investing his money. I'm not gonna waste your time in this video and give you the sh investing advice that you've probably heard already. Hopefully you can believe me when I say this, but there is not a single good video on investing out there. All these guys are telling you about index funds and stocks and crypto and property. They're telling broke young men to invest in the things that you should invest in when you're rich. If you're in your 20s right now and you're not that rich, right? If you're not making 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars a month, a month, not per year, a month. If you're not making over a hundred thousand dollars per year, this is the video to follow. Everyone else is going to tell you this bullshit advice that you should start investing early and you should start putting $50 a month into the stocks and shares and you know they'll, they'll tell you this small dick shit which is never gonna get you rich they're gonna tell you to ruin your thinking with like new decisions to make and new ventures to think about that's gonna fry your brain because you have to learn new things about the stock market or property and just get started with with five dollars a month and if, if if you invest five dollars a month every month for for 700 years that then you'd be a millionaire whoa the math works out this is what these motherfuckers are telling young men bro they're telling young men be a good boy invest a small amount because you're broke don't work on increasing your money and becoming successful just just stay broke but it, how about you just stop buying coffee stop buying things that actually give you some joy and pleasure invest just ten dollars huh? fifty dollars a month they tell you the shitty advice of this small dick advice which is like so applicable to the peasants around the world who like they hear like oh i'm broke because i buy coffee so if i stop buying coffee then i'd be a millionaire wow that advice is so applicable to people who have no idea how to actually make money now the thing is you're here not actually because you want to invest your money. You're here because you just want to become rich and wealthy, right? So I'm going to teach you the best way to do that with the journey that I had to personally go through. And near the end of this video, you're going to realize that this is literally the only way that you'd actually become successful. And the advice that you're seeing from all these gurus, from all these YouTubers, from all these authors, is just not that good. The advice they're giving you is so applicable because if you're a lazy person, it gives you something to focus on. What I'm about to tell you in this video, it won't work for you if you're lazy. It won't work for you if you don't want to do hard hard work. I'm about to tell you something which is actually going to get you rich if you follow the steps, but it's going to be fucking hard and you're going to have to dedicate your life to it and you're going to have to stop playing video games and you're going to have to stop eating junk food that fucks up your like your brain's power and focus. The reason why this video is not going to get that many views is because what I'm about to teach you, most people won't be able to do this. How to invest your money in your 20s. You don't invest in other people's companies. You don't invest in crypto or in stocks or in property. You invest in yourself. Now, what does the term investing mean? Investing means you put something, usually money, into something to hold hopefully make it grow and then you get a bigger return on investment. So if you put some of your money into a company like Apple or you put it into like, you know, the big like index funds like Apple and like 500 different companies, you're giving them money to help them with their business. And you're hoping that since they think that you're a good boy, they'll give you a little bit more money in return. I think your, your PP size has to be very small for that because if you understand this concept of investing, why would you invest in someone else's business instead of your own? So if you're already really rich, if you're already making making over $100,000 per year, fine. Now let's think about property and crypto. But if you're making less than 100,000 per year, if you're literally broke, if you don't have a job, if you're young, if you're studying or something, bro, I promise you that the thing to invest in is totally yourself and to start developing skills and maybe the best thing that you can do to begin with, which is how I started my journey of becoming successful. I invested in myself by giving myself the most important thing, time. Let's say you're working right now, you're, you know, you found a way to save up $1,000, $2,000 or something, right? So you've got some money that you want to invest. These motherfuckers on YouTube will tell you, invest it into stocks and shares and maybe you'll make a year from now, if you invest your $2,000, you might make $20. These guys are literally telling you that if you've got $2,000, you should invest it into the index funds and a year from now, you might have $20 as a return if the, the market hasn't went down. These guys are telling you to invest your money so that hopefully you can make $20 over the entire year. $2,000 is not a lot of money, but you know what it can buy you? time. I saved up $2,000 or £2,000 and I used that to invest in myself by giving me some free runaway, some time that I didn't need to work a job. This is what you do when you're a young person. You're studying, you've got some part-time jobs, some full-time job, whatever. You find a way to make you know, a couple hundred dollars, thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. Save up a, a, a small, like a pretty good amount for that age and think to yourself, okay, this is my sort of nest egg for me to live off. Now I can quit the job that I didn't even want to work long-term. If you're working some shitty job right now in like some warehouse or something that you don't even like or Uber 
weeks or whatever. Save up $1,000, save up $2,000, save up a couple of months of like spending money, like savings. Hopefully you're still living with your parents at this point. If you are broke, you should be living with your parents. And if you saved up like $2,000 and you're living with your parents, bro, you would essentially have enough money saved up to not need to work a job for how long? Three months, six months, maybe a year. If you were living with your parents and especially if you're young and you know, they're buying the food, it's like, what do you even need money for? That single great, like, I want to really drill this in. This video is going to be so boring because I'm just going to, I really hope some guy out there can take this. The single greatest thing that you can invest in is to save up some money and just use that so that you don't have to keep working some job that takes up most of your time. And it, obviously if it's the job that you don't even like want to stay with long term. If your real dream is to become an entrepreneur and you know, become a digital nomad and make money online from a laptop and stuff and you're working some shitty job right now, the biggest goal that you could do, the biggest return on investment you could get is just free up your time and not need to work that job. Work hard, save up some money, quit the job and now you've got that money saved up which now you don't need a job for like six months. Now you can be full-time self-employed. You can literally like wake up seven days a week and work on your business instead of having to like split your attention a few days a week, going to work or going to school or some shit. That is step one. Save up enough money to invest in yourself to get free time so that then you can pursue the thing that you actually want to do without having to like split your time to work some shitty job that you don't want. That's the most important thing. You need to invest to get your time back. So many guys do this the opposite way. They'll work some job that they don't even like, that they don't even like want to stay with and they'll work it just so that they can save up some money to invest into like stocks and other things. That doesn't make any sense. Your time is the most valuable thing. If you think you're going to become successful, if you think you're a smart young man, hardworking young man, you need to deeply value your time more than investing into stocks and crypto and hoping to get $50 back. Your time's worth so much more than that because your time is how you get shit done. That's step one, free up your time with the money. Then step two is to develop better skills so that you can make more money. You want to know the real secret to success. You want to know the secret that so many guys don't even realize, even though it shouldn't be a secret because it's fucking common sense, but you want to know the real secret to, to becoming rich and wealthy, make more money. Now that might seem like common sense wise, Hamza saying it like this. Do you know that the answer to this question from the mouths of everyone else who's trying to give you bad advice will tell you the secret of becoming rich is to save money. Which one is it? Saving money. If that was the thing that was going to get you rich, then your parents would be rich because they've tried to save money all of their life. If that was the thing that was going to get you rich and wealthy and free, then all of these people that you see would be fine. They would be absolutely fine financially. And yet you see the average person get absolutely annihilated in this hard financial times because they try to save. They put their efforts on saving money and not buying coffee and, and downgrading their internet package. So now you've got shitty slow internet, but the, your parents save eight pounds a month. Saving money does not work. Saving money only will work when you're making so much that the amount that you can save is a good amount, but people are out here literally getting happy that they can save $12 a month. You're not going to get rich from that. There is one way to get rich. There is one way to get free and you must understand this even though it seems so simple. You've got to make more money. Anyone who's telling you right now that you need to save more is lying because when one of these fake gurus tells an average person to save more money, what happens? Straight away, it pops into the peasant's mind like, oh, okay, okay, I know what to do. I, I, I shouldn't buy coffee. I shouldn't buy this. I shouldn't buy this. I shouldn't buy this. They've got stuff to do and it seems a little bit easier. If you tell them save $10, $50 a month, they'll be able to start to work out how and it feels a little bit easy to do that. But yeah, when you tell someone to make more money and the way to do that is through business and the way to actually do well in business is to transform your entire life so that you're no longer playing any amount of video games, you're no longer drinking, you're no longer smoking, you're literally just waking up and fucking working on something productive and actually like doing hard work that fries your brain. And I'm not talking, you know, build a logo and spend time listening to music whilst you do some fun tasks. I'm talking about like mentally painful tasks that no one really wants to do, but you do them even though it hurts and even though you don't feel like it. That's how you make more money. You do hard work that other people don't want to do and you do it smarter and you do it faster than them and you do it better than them. That's the concept of making more money. And yet in the modern day, all you're told is save as much as you can. Uh. Step two, you start to develop better skills so that you can increase how much you can make. Increasing your income is the most important part of this entire metric, not decreasing your expenses. Decreasing your expenses only matters when you've got a high income to begin with. So literally the only thought you should have is to increase your income. And I promise you, listen, you might think, wait, what if I do both? What if I try to increase my income and decrease my expenses, bro? I promise you that that's the wrong thing. And I wish you could believe me. Maybe you can't right now because you've still got like broke people mindset. The reason why you can't think of doing both at the same time is because then you're not going to be an entrepreneur. Then you'll be one of these people who are middle class and they've got you know 50,000 a year that's that's a pretty good wage and yet they hate their lives why because they've got no free time why 
because they keep trying to decrease their expenses and they've done so in a way that, yeah, they save $25 a month, but now they walk to work and it's half an hour slower. All these same people who try to reduce their expenses and your parents will do this, maybe you do this, and you focus on trying to like spend less money. You'll look around at the gyms around your area and you'll see that, wow, this one gym is, is $10 cheaper a month. So you'll focus, okay, you'll get that one, right? It's cheaper. And yet what you didn't realize is the gym that was $10 a month cheaper, it's gonna take you an extra 10 minutes to get there and an extra 10 minutes back. If you go to the gym five, six times a week, that's two hours. That's eight hours of your month gone to save $10. People who focus on decreasing expenses deeply undervalue their time and end up just being so busy doing nothing. And then their income stabilizes. The person who actually gets rich focuses entirely on their income. And then once they're making a lot of money, then they choose what to do with their expenses. I never thought, like, I'm going to tell you my story, bro. I never thought about decreasing my expenses. And so my parents and my sister found this so like weird and almost they were, they were hateful towards me a little bit. When I first started making money and I would spend quite a lot of money on food deliveries, you know, like on Uber Eats and Deliveroo. And my sister would say something like, oh my God, you've spent a hundred pounds this week on food. Are you stupid? That's so much money. What she didn't realize, no offense to her, is like she's got brokey mindset because by me ordering food, it meant that I didn't need to spend 20 minutes, half an hour cooking, five minutes cleaning up. The half an hour saved meant that I could record another two videos, which ended up making 50 pounds, a hundred pounds, 200 pounds. And I spent 20 pounds on that meal. The young entrepreneurs who go on to make a really good amount of money, like I'm talking above 100K a year, 250K, that, that seems like an impossible amount, right? There's young entrepreneurs who are doing that and that's because they're focused entirely on increasing their income. And the way you do that is you develop better skills. So in this step, you start to invest in the things that will give you better skills. Now, the easiest one is books. Start buying books with absolutely no guilt at all. And you might be thinking, wait, but I can just like find books online for free and you can do that. But no offense, but that really shows your self-image. It really shows your identity. If you're gonna go through the pain of five minutes trying to find like, you know, getting viruses on your computer and trying to find some like free software instead of just buying a book for $5. Now you might not be there just yet and $5 might be a lot to you. But relatively, like if you value your time, you'll stop to like consider trying to get the free thing. You'll stop being the guy who's trying to wait in line with a coupon, you know, like in a big line because you can get a free $1 pizza. Bro, I used to do that in uni. Literally, people would just wait in line because you could get a free one pound pizza. You'd literally be stood there for 20 minutes thinking that you're getting a free pizza. You've just wasted 20 minutes of your life. So all these people who are there right now who are getting a one pound pizza for free because they waited 20 minutes, but they're on minimum wage and they make eight pounds an hour. So they make about two pound 50 or so per 20 minutes. They actually lost money by getting a free pizza. This concept of your time actually being worth something does not exist in most people's brains. And that's why they struggle to become successful. If you want to become successful, there's one core thing you need, bro. You need to value your time. You need to understand that your time is how you get things done. So in this stage, you've already freed up a bunch of your time. It's time to now start increasing how much your time is worth by developing your skills, buy a bunch of books, which it teach the skills that you need. For example, if you want to become a YouTuber, you get the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's like $10. You start reading that and you become better on camera. If you want to do sales and you want to get into internet marketing, you buy those books, read them, learn from them, study them like a handbook and implement what you've learned. Along this step of developing your skills so you can increase your income, one of the best things you can do if you've got the money for it is start to get specific advice from the person who's already done the thing that you want. This is called coaching or mentorship. So for example, if you want to become a YouTuber, now you can you know study the free YouTube videos and you can buy some some books and that's really good. But the fastest way possible to become like a really good YouTuber is to pay a successful YouTuber to hop onto a call with you for a couple of hours and to like literally go through everything that he can teach you and he'll watch you, you know, he'll look through your YouTube channel and stuff. That's the, the best way. The issue with this is that if you actually want to get advice from someone who's really successful already, like if you wanted advice from me, you wouldn't be able to afford it. And no offense, like I don't say this to be obnoxious, but like almost no one who actually watches my videos could afford my like one-to-one -one time. Like my one-to-one -one time is not actually for my followers who are quite young and quite new to like self-improvement and being productive and making money. My one-to-one -one mentorship is like a hidden thing that's available to like millionaires if they want to pay me like tens of thousands of dollars to hop on a video call with them. It seems stupid, right? People literally pay thousands of dollars to hop onto a video call with me and they'll ask me like, oh, what do you think about this video? The reason why is because they're worth millions and they know that a conversation with someone like me would drastically increase how fast they get success. What you potentially could try to do at this stage is to start to look for people who are slightly undervaluing their time, but who are way more successful than you. Maybe, for example, you're a YouTuber, you go find someone who's got 100K subs, 200K subs, and you message him like, oh bro, I'll, I'll pay you $100 for an hour of your time. Come onto a video call and let me just ask you a bunch of questions and, you know, like review my channel and give me some advice. It might seem really expensive. Like, wait, I'm going to pay him like $100 for his time. Like, whoa, whoa, like, but I only make $10 an hour. The reason why you do this is because you'll save hours and hours and hours when you have the correct guidance. So at this stage, you freed up a bunch of your time. That's how you first use any money you want to invest. You actually use that to free up your time so you don't have to work any jobs. Make sure you invest your money by not needing a job first. That's the most important thing. If, if like it's a job you don't actually want to have. Then invest your money by improving your skills. Do that through getting 
books or paying people to like teach you and you know get coaches or whatever. After following these two steps, you're actually gonna start making a lot more money than you thought was possible because if you freed up your time and now you've actually made your skills better and your time is more valuable. It's not hard to go through this process in three months, six months and start making $50 to $100 an hour. Like I was on benefits, so I was on government welfare and a few months later after I followed those two steps, I started making about, about 100 pounds per hour just from improving my skills. It's like, if you follow these two steps, bro, it's not hard to get up to $50 an hour. Honestly, like I know that seems an incredibly like un unreal number for some people, but if you've improved your skills, like you become worth it. And if you freed up your time so that you've got time to improve your skills and also that you value your time, you can literally start charging $50 an hour for things that you can sell because you've learned those skills. This is the point now where you've started to make a little bit more money. So you're probably not here just yet, but when you've started to make like a good amount to the point that you know, your family and your friends are like, whoa, you're making so much. This is the point that you should still spend that money on yourself to make your life better. The thing that I did was that I signed up to a fancy gym nearby, like a really, really fancy like health spa, which was 10 times the price of a normal gym membership. That meant that when I went there, I felt like I was high class. I felt like I was like, you know, more successful than I actually was. And guess what happened? My self-image and my identity increased. And that deeply was so valuable because then I was around people who were more wealthy. You don't realize like there's so many things that you could spend money on and invest your money on that will have a higher ROI than just trying to get fucking index funds 10% per year or something. So I did that. I started spending 150 pounds a month on my gym membership instead of like 15. And then I also started buying like healthier food. And then I bought some things that would make my life better. Like for example, I bought an aura ring, which is like $300 and helps you improve your sleep. This is the point that you should start to improve other things in your life because the ROI of signing up to like a gym that you love going to is way higher than 10% return on investment or 50% or 100%. It's, it's so much more important to spend money on a life that you actually like. So that's stage three, spend money on some things that are actually gonna make your life better. And then stage four, at this point, you've got a company. At this point, you've outsourced a bunch of tasks. You're more of like a business owner, a CEO. You're making a bunch of money. Now you've, you're making quite literally 10, 20, 30,000 per month. Now choose to invest in other people's company because you probably invested as much as you could in yourself that now the return on investment, like you know, you're running out of ideas for what to spend money on for yourself. Now it's like, okay, since there's nothing really high ROI that I could spend on myself, I may as well start spending on other people and get like a return on investment from them. So this is the point that you now start to consider crypto, property, stocks. I think the best way to start in stage four is to go directly to Bitcoin. So that's exactly what I did. I didn't really understand crypto more than the basics, but I kind of assumed that Bitcoin is going to be kind of like a safe investment. Not really safe, but I kind of assumed Bitcoin was going to be a good investment. And of course, you know, it's very volatile. So this is the point you need to prepare your psychology for, because now there's going to be a lot of risk that's outside your control. I invested into Bitcoin. I put a fair amount in there and the prices have went all the way down, right? There's a lot of people who would have saw the prices go down and started panicking and started getting upset and oh, I've lost so much money. I have not had a single thought about it apart from right now. I don't even keep up to date with crypto news. I've invested money into it and then I never looked at it again. When I hear, you know, some random news article or YouTube videos, maybe a year from now that, oh, Bitcoins went all the way back up. It's like, okay, maybe I'll sell then. You need to have this kind of attitude. If you don't want to do trading and gambling, but you want to do more like safe long-term investments, that you're going to invest in something and be absolutely stoic to whatever the bullshit you see in the news and all these people saying, oh, it's this, this, dead and this is dead, whatever, whatever, whatever. You invest into something and you just kind of forget that you've ever invested in there up until you kind of see a message that your investments probably made a lot more money. Do this with index funds. So you can go and find the S&P 500. You can go onto websites like, what's that uh, investment site? Vanguard. That's so creepy, bro. I have not searched for Vanguard on this laptop. And yet just because I've just spoke about it now, I just pressed V and it was the search result. How fucked is that, bro? How fucked is that? I have not searched for it on this this website. I've not even thought about it for fucking like a year straight, you know, investing, Vanguard, whatever. I just pressed V in, in Google, like the search bar and literally Vanguard was just there just because they've heard me. They've heard me talk about it. I don't know if this video is any good or not because this is the point that I've got to where I focus entirely on increasing the income. My income is about more than half a million per year now and it's gonna drastically increase above that. Once you get to this point, I know that I just brushed past like a pretty big detail of how much money I make. I make about half a million a year right now and that's like I mean that's income to be honest and not including expenses the profits not that big profits maybe like 100k 150k 200k something like that like but there's, it's going to be about double that in the next few months on average once you get to this point when you're making so much money then it's like okay now I can spend time going to find like the best financial advisor and start to invest there hopefully you weren't waiting all this time to learn exactly you know step by step how to start investing in stocks because if I can convince you of one thing do not think about investing in anyone else before you've invested in yourself I'm at this point now when 
bro, the amount of money that I'm making is stupid. And I've got here because I focus on one thing and just one thing only, increasing my income. Now I've got the, the place and the time to think about other investments. From the start, I followed everyone else's advice and I started looking into property when I was broke. And I started looking into like stocks and shares and stuff and invested $50 a month like a good boy. Or if I tried to like think saving was the key to wealth. If you want to get wealthy, if you really want to learn how to like invest, focus on yourself. Click and watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.